I'm Danigal Goldthwaite Young. I am an associate professor at the University of Delaware. And my book is Irony and Outrage, The Polarized Landscape of Rage, Fear, and Laughter in the United States, where I finally answer the question, why is it that it seems that there is so little conservative political satire? And why is it that liberals can't seem to do political talk radio right? And so liberal satire is all about experimentation, exploration, play, puzzle solving. That's very tied to the psychology of liberalism, which is high in tolerance for ambiguity, which is high in need for cognition. On the other side, outreach programming is very didactic. It's very explicit. It is threat-oriented. It is about um, monitoring your environment and making sure that you're aware of those things that pose a threat to you or your family or your way of life. And it does so in a way that is not implicit. It is absolutely explicit. And when you start looking at the psychology of conservatives, you realize that absolutely makes sense. I have studied the effects of watching political satire and political humor on attitudes, knowledge, behaviors, and different kinds of political participation for about 15 years. And whenever I would go and talk about these findings and I would talk about the ways that political satire shapes beliefs, somebody would always ask, why is it that it seems that political satire only comes from the left? Why don't we see conservative political satire? And I had various questions, I mean various answers to that question that I tried on over the years, and they were never really compelling. And so this book is my response to that question, why there is so little political satire that comes from conservatives, and why most political satire comes from the left. Most books might either have a historical approach or maybe look uh, from the standpoint of industry or from the standpoint of psychology. This book has all of those things. So first I do a deep dive into the first generation of American irony and outrage, which comes to us from the late 1950s, early 1960s. I then chronicle all of these changes that took place in media deregulation and in the growth of new technologies that helped to shape the media landscape in a way that created the space for new emerging forms of political information. And then I go into a really deep dive to understand what is humor, what is satire, how is humor processed in the brain, what are the people like who are most likely to appreciate jokes, do they have something in common? And then I tie those things together with people's aesthetic preferences, meaning, you know, when, when people are spoken to by a particular work of art. Is it possible that those kinds of preferences are also related to some kind of underlying psychological traits or characteristics of the audience? The book argues that instead of thinking of irony or ironic satire and conservative outrage as two completely different genres of programming, we should actually think of them as very much connected to the psychology of the people that create and consume them. So when you start thinking about these genres in terms of the psychology of the people who make and consume them, it absolutely makes sense that this is what our political information landscape looks like on the left and the right. So things that we think of as rational political opinions are actually very much tied to who we are as animals our needs in the world, what our values are, how we relate to threats in the environment, how we relate to exploration and play. So it is not completely random that liberals tend to be more drawn to certain kinds of art than conservatives. It is not completely random that conservatives will tend to engage in a particular kind of political talk compared to liberals. It's very much because we literally are different animals.